today's video we're gonna learn how to create this animation in Figma and Face software. This animation is inspired by Klarna mobile app, so we're gonna try to recreate that. Let's get to it! As always, the Figma file to follow along is in the description without the animation, so you can recreate them yourself. We're gonna start with the icons carousel, so to do that I prepared the icons before. I draw them all in Figma so you can easily recreate them. Next, all those five icons I group together and create a component out of them. As you can see, there is five icons on top and then five icons on bottom. On the next variant, I simply reorder the icons, so this time the blue one is on top and the third icon is the purple one on top. And the ready set, we're gonna place on the iPhone frame. So the first screen got the green icon as I selected, second screen got blue icon selected and the third screen got purple icon selected. To achieve the carousel effect, we're gonna crop the bottom section, so only the top section will be showing. We can do that by holding command on our keyboard and resizing our group. And now only the top part will be visible. I'm gonna repeat the same process for the other variants and we're gonna connect those screens later on in this tutorial. Next, this part we're gonna animate using first software. I simply draw a couple of rectangles with linear gradient inside. For the bar lane, I use the dash stroke option and the top of our chart is also a rectangles. So once we got all of that ready, I'm gonna select that frame and export this design into face software. In face software, I like to always group the elements before I'm gonna start animating them. Also rename so I know which element is which one. So I'm gonna select the bottom linear rectangle and the top one and group them together. Once I have all my layers renamed and grouped, we're gonna hit the animation mode. So with the face software, you can animate by keyframes, which is very simple thing to do compared to other animation softwares. Once you select your element, you can see there is a time frame showing up at the bottom and the property panels showing at the right side. You can set the keyframe to each of the property. I will start by setting a keyframe to the main frame, which is the main frame that it closes in or our bar chart inside. And I'm gonna scale the size to 0%. Next, I'm gonna move the frame slightly, maybe like 0.02 second. And another keyframe, I'm gonna change the scale to 100%. By doing this, we're gonna achieve unfolding effect. So our main frame gonna appear on the screen by scaling from zero to 100%. Next, we're gonna scale the position. So on the right side panel, we're gonna type our position we want the frame to be in. So I want to come in from the bottom to the top. And then I'm gonna move our timeline and I'm gonna adjust the position to be exactly in the middle. Next, I'm gonna hide all the main elements. So we're gonna have only white rectangle. We can do that by selecting all the elements and we're gonna change the opacity to 0% in the right hand side. I'm gonna move the timeline slightly bit when our frame is unfolding. I'm gonna move the timeline to the moment when our whole rectangle is visible and I'm gonna select the first bar chart. In that moment, we're gonna change opacity to 100% and we're gonna lock the keyframe on the transformation. To achieve the growing effect, we're gonna start by having a very small bar chart and after a few seconds, it's gonna go to its 100%. So we're gonna scale it to very, very little and then move our timeline a few seconds forward and we're gonna change the height to its original position. I'm gonna repeat that process for each of the bar chart. So I'm gonna move slightly bit our time timeline, scale another bar chart down and after a few seconds, I'm gonna scale it up to its original position. So I've set each of my bar chart gonna start its animation at the same time, but each animation gonna go at different speed. Next, I'm gonna repeat the similar process to the top bar. So firstly, we're gonna change it opacity to 100%. Next, we're gonna lock it in transformation. We're gonna scale to almost invisible, move the timeline, and then we're gonna scale it back to its original position. Once all the bar chart grow, we're gonna add our dash lane. So firstly, we're gonna lock the opacity at 0%. And just a few moments later, we're gonna unlock it to 100%. So our first animation is ready. We're gonna export it in a GIF and take care of the second animation. So our second animation needs a bit more tweaking because in the face software you can also design, we're gonna slightly tweak the elements which been exported from Figma, not too much accurate. So we're gonna select our rectangle and then I'm gonna change the rounded corners in the top right corner. I'm gonna 
change the rounded corners for other rectangles as well. And for the top card, I'm also gonna change the fill to be image instead of color. So we're gonna go to the fill and select the last option, which is image, and I'm gonna add my images in there. Once all that ready, we're gonna go and hit the animation mode. Firstly, I'm gonna scale all the cards to the left side. So I'm gonna select the backgrounds, the white backgrounds, and I'm gonna scale that layers to the left side. Next, we're gonna select the other elements and we're gonna change their opacity to zero. I'm gonna move the time lapse to 0 0.4 seconds and we're gonna select our white backgrounds again and scale them back to their original position. I see I forgot to select one element, so I'm gonna select that one and again change the opacity to zero. Next, I'm gonna animate the top card. So once our first animation unfolding card is finished, I'm gonna move the timeline slightly bit and change the opacity of the card pictures first. So first I'm gonna lock again its opacity, change it to zero, and milliseconds after we're gonna change it to 100%. Same I'm gonna do for the other elements in the first card. I'm gonna repeat that process for the other cards below. So once the white background unfold, wait slightly milliseconds, lock the opacity to zero and then milliseconds after change opacity to 100%. Now let's add the same scaling effects we created in our first animation. So we're gonna lock the transform position, scale it maximum to the left, wait a few seconds and scale to the original position to the right. I'm gonna move my timeline by 0.02 seconds and scale the rectangles in the second card and same with the top card. So second animation is ready, export as GIF. I'm gonna set the color to be transparent. I'm gonna set the loop to be off on the screen is on, but uh, I'm gonna export this again after that, realizing I don't wanna loop this animation. Uh, speed to 1%, frame to 50, start time zero and my animation time is 0 0.7 seconds. And the last but not least, I think the easiest animation to make, I made the card in Figma before, which is simply rectangle filled with color and inside is the image. We're gonna go and hit the animation mode. I'm gonna select all the cards and move their position outside of the frame. Next, I'm gonna move our timeline and we're gonna move cards one by one so they're stacking below each other. So we're gonna take our bottom card and change it position to the top. Next, we're gonna take our second card, change it position to the top. Same with the third one. We wanna make sure there is enough time between each card going up. I'm thinking 0.02 seconds should be enough, but I might tweak that to be slightly bit longer after all. I'm gonna repeat that process for the second row. So the bottom card is gonna have the longest animation and the top card is gonna have the shortest one. To make this even better, I'm gonna slightly move the first, the top card even more to the bottom. So it's gonna go up and down. So I'm gonna move the timeline slightly bit to the moment when the bottom card is already in the position. And then the PlayStation card gonna go slightly to the top at this time then gonna jump back to the starting position. Same I'm gonna repeat for the Adidas card and the sherry on top, you're gonna smooth that transition. So I'm gonna change it to ease in and out. So it's feels more natural. I'm gonna select all the points on our timeline and change for each and one of them. Once that animation is ready, I'm gonna again export it as a GIF. And let's go back to Figma. So in Figma, I added an ellipse with a blur on 100% similarly to the icons. And then I'm just gonna simply draw a rectangle and fill it with our made GIF. So we have three screens, three animations. Let me quickly upload those GIFs in Figma and hit the prototype mode. In prototype mode, we're gonna connect all those three screens together by selecting the equivalent icon and then animation on top, navigate to the next screen, animation, smart animate, and it curve, I initially set it to ease in and out, but I think way more natural would be if we set it to the quick or bouncy. Let's preview the quick. Yes, the quick one feels way more natural. So let's now connect all the icons to its screens. Don't forget to also connect the third one to the first one, third one to the second one and so on. And few tips while selecting a smart animate in Figma is very important to name your layers. So for example, if I have the leaf icon, I'm gonna call it icon one. And on the second screen, it's also be gonna called icon one, even if it's in different position. This way we're gonna get the desired effect of our rotating carousel. If I were to send this to developer or 
develop this design myself i wouldn't use the gif because as you can see the quality is not the best even though we export it at frame 50 i would export instead in a lottie file or json thank you for watching if you have any questions leave them down below don't forget to subscribe and i see you in the next video